today we're going to update on All Day Reef's reef tank. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. I'm at All Day Reef's house right now and checking out his tank. It's time for an update. It's been a while since I've been over here. Now if you haven't checked him out, he finally started an Instagram and it's at All Day Reef, so make sure you check him out. And he has an awesome contest going on right now, which we'll get to later. Tank is looking gorgeous as always. Um, he's still using the Focus Tronic Focus One LEDs. And I really love how well the tank actually videos and photographs with these lights. It's a really nice color rendition. The tank itself is looking pretty pristine as always. He's added a few new corals to it. Actually looking at his big Zoa garden, you can see he's built it out and added quite a bit to it. As we come down, the hammer garden's getting pretty big. Got new brains, nice pink Cadillac, lots of beautiful new corals in the tank. Look at this down the corner, these two giant elegance corals. Those things are just beautiful. And the other cool thing is too, you have five different clowns in this tank. And you got three here, they're all getting along. We got some other bullet hole clowns over here. And everyone's just happy. Like there's no scraps at all with all these different clowns, which is really cool to see. No NEMS, straight up elegance, elegance and frog spawn hosting. Although in all fairness, I had multiple bubble tips in my tank and the clowns never touched them. They love their little leather. Yeah. I like this is a nice cushy. Nice cushy curl. Thank you. Now he has a peninsula style tank, which I absolutely love. Uh, one day, still, same with mine, I want to do a rune divider, and I think it'd be cool to be able to have that wrap around. So, it really is one of my favorite style tanks. Uh, for flow, we have an MP40 on the one backside blowing towards the overflow. And on the opposite side of the overflow, we also have a gyre, and I believe that's the CP40. Jabo version. And between the two, it provides really good flow in the tank. Everything, there's movement everywhere you go. I'm not seeing any dead spots, so everything is looking really happy with it. Take a look at what actually powers this tank. So we come to the back, we have our overflow, which runs down into the sump where we have two four inch filter socks. Uh, the next chamber over we have a Bubble Magnus Curve 7 skimmer with a little neck cleaner on top of it. And behind that we have a Pacific Sun Algae Reactor. Now this is the Arid Pro. And Brad, so you're saying you empty it about once a week? Just so I can get those nutrients out of the tank. Otherwise you're not really removing anything. You're just having the chato grow. Now after this you have like a really nice frag section down here. So I believe you said this was 15 by 18? Yeah. And it's being lit by an AI Prime HD. Now I absolutely love these lights. They're, I honestly feel they're one of your best bangs for your buck on a smaller system. Lots of juice in a tiny package. Tons and tons of frags down there. I've been fragging up a storm lately. Now the next chamber over, we have this beautiful NIOS Torque Reactor. I've been actually eyeing these things up for ages. They're super sleek design, there's no plumbing, everything's self-containing, twist it, pop it out, and you're ready to roll, so I appreciate how clean that is. Now if we look in the back, we are currently running a Vector S1 return pump. So that little pump is doing all the flow for this big tank, so definitely tiny but muddy. Back down to the dosing section, we have the Jabo DP4 doser. Now this guy is a classic, I know a lot of people run this one. It really is hard to beat for the price and they're little workhorses. Aside from placing the heads once in a while, they're a very solid choice. Uh, next over we have the Elkatronic. So as you guys know, I'm running the Elkatronic on my tank as well. On mine I'm using to monitor and adjust my calcium reactor. And on this one, Brad's actually using it to dose his tank and make adjustments on top of the Jabo doser. I mean, as everyone knows, as your corals grow, the demand for alkalinity, magnesium, and calcium goes up. So I have the Alcatronic checking my water every 11 hours instead of 12, just in case, you know, at the same time every day my ATO kicks on or whatever. I just want to get a, you know, different reading as the days go on. And what I do is uh, if my Alcatronic 
kicks on one day. It says my alkalinity is low. Uh, let's say it doses 24 mils. Well, I know that not only have my corals grown, but I'm going to be short 24 mils of calcium and magnesium as well. So what I'll do is I'll bump up the Jabeo by 24 mils a day, split into 24 doses, and uh, that way everything stays level. Everything you know is is good for the next week or two till I got to bump it up again. Really cool way of just letting it figure exactly how much to tweak your dosing, and you know it's basically spot on every time. So really cool way to do it. Next, going down, we have the one gallon space saver containers. Got a little DIY Voss water bottle doser down there, love it. And looking on the side here, we have the Ranco temperature controller. Now I appreciate that because it is very important to have a proper temperature controller. Always back up your backups. Now with these dosing containers, uh, so your dosing looks like the Alka Forest. How are you liking Alka Forest so far? I was just doing the basic Alka Forest three part, which was the calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium. And then uh, I actually got a hold of Sirwin, who's the owner of Aqua Forest, and he gave me the recipe for their component one, two, three plus, which was basically an enhanced version of the three part. Uh, so you actually mix in the uh, components uh, A, B, C, and K, and reef mineral salts. And uh, the cool thing about adding the reef mineral salts is normally they would elevate your salt levels sl very, very slowly. Um, but with dosing or with using the Alctronic, which pulls 50 mils of water every time that it's used, you're actually removing some salt water. So by adding the reef mineral salts back in, I'm actually keeping my salinity way more stable than I would normally. Well, that's a very cool way to do it. I like how you calculate all these little miniature adjustments to keep your tank super duper stable. Now the stability really shows because your tank is looking gorgeous and every time I come over and check it out it always looks stunning. Absolutely gorgeous tank, I always love checking this one out. Now Brad's on Instagram at All Day Reef, so be sure you check him out, give him a follow and he's also running a 1500 follower giveaway right now for a XP Aqua Ultimate ATO which is a pretty sweet little ATO so make sure you guys enter that contest and good luck winning it.